What's up guys, it's me, Matt Samurai84 here, here for my September's edition of PS Plus Plays. Uh, now we've got three new games for this month. Um, uh, i am kind of been carrying on with the format I've done last month where I just do it as one video, just purely fact because I haven't had time and uh, space to properly do it how I would usually do it, but maybe this is better, but it kind of takes more time because I kind of play through the games more, which is probably better. Anyway, we've got three new games, we've got two PS4 games and one PS5 game, and uh, yeah, basically I'll just be giving my like, general final thoughts of each game, and then I'll be giving a thumb score whether I think it's a good game and whether I think it's a good offering at the end I'll give an overall score for the month so uh, first off let's jump into the first game our first title for September is Grand Blue Fantasy Versus uh, it's a like two and a half D fighting game done by Arc System Works and uh, they, you know they've done lots of fighting games really they've done lots um, I've had my eye on purchasing a physical version of this game for a bit because I've just I thought it looked good. I'm not a massive fighter, you know. I, I'm not great at fighting games anymore. I was a big consumer of them in the PS1 and PS2 uh, era, but since then um, I kind of jump here and there and stuff, you know. I used to be a big Tekken person and all that stuff, and, but now not really. Uh, but I have to say, this game. It came out in March 2020, and it's probably one of the most beautiful fighting games I have ever played. Um, it's just so wonderful. Um, and the nice thing about this game, it kind of brings something different to fighting games, because uh, they've got an RPG story mode, uh, which is like a really nice addition. Um, and it actually has a good story, which makes you want to play through it. Um, the RPG mode plays like a side-scrolling beat-em-up game with the RPG elements of leveling up your character and weapons and add abilities, etc, etc. Uh, my only gripe with its decision for you to like constantly double-tap left and right to run, otherwise you just move like a snail, which is a bit annoying, but that is the mechanics of the game. Uh, it does really require you to do a lot of dashes to attack your enemies. Uh, but you'll get used to that, really. Um, now, one of the main things with a fire is how well it controls. And is it easy to pull off moves? Now, I personally think this is a very accessible fighter. Uh, with its rather simple-like controls and commands. Uh, with nothing that I've like, really come across is that hard to pull off. And that comes from a, a classic like SNES fighter you know, uh, Street Fighter 2 player, you know, I'm used to that, those simple controls, yeah, there's some more complex ones, uh, but it's still quite fairly simple to pull off the moves. Um, the one thing, uh, one of the things that is like, I enjoy most about this game is the character design, the detail, and just the general aesthetic of each character uh, oozes, it's just like on another level, and it has a very solid voiceover. Uh, cast for all the characters in the game uh, but a major downer for this game is that there are only 13 characters with the rest appearing as part of paid DLC which is a little bit annoying I feel like there should be like more characters than just 13 uh, there's an arcade mode which feels like it's just there in a way there really isn't any actual stories per character you used to get on like older like fighter games you know, the classic PS1, PS2 used to go play for the arcade and yeah, there's like a whole story part at the end, but really it isn't any of that. Though, when you get to choose after each round, you get to choose your opponent, uh, who they'll be, and what they'll difficult be, so they'll be like different, like this character is easy, this character is medium, and you get to choose and kind of go up and go down as you wish. Um, I did jump into the online realm of the title, which I found slightly odd. It makes you play like five games against the CPU before you can fight anyone online. Uh, and when I managed to play some uh, people online, I did find my experience rather laggy and just rather hard to have a decent fun. Even though I 
just managed to win uh, my matches somehow, just a bit of luck. It is, uh, but overall, this is one of the most beautiful fighters out there that adds more to it than other games in the same genre of its RPG mode, which is very, it's, it's there, it's there, and it, I know I quite enjoy it. I will play through it uh, while making it rather easy to play for people who aren't great at fighters. But there is enough depth for experienced players to have a lot of fun. I can see why this does the rounds in the fighting comp circuit. And when you look at its Metacritic, it's, it's a uh, 78, which is pretty good, I think. I think it's pretty good. Slightly low under user score at a 6.5, um, which I find that, I find it should be more up there, like a 7.5, personally, that's what I think. Because um, I feel like it is a pretty decent fighting game. And it looks beautiful. Uh, so if I was to give a thumb score, well, my game score, I think I would give it a three quarter of a thumb up because I think it's a very good game and an offering score. Uh, it's a bit over two years old and I think it's a very decent fighter. So I would give another three quarter of a thumb up. Uh, I think overall it's a very good offering and a very decent game. If it's not your cup of tea, then I understand, but I feel like it's a decent game and a decent offering. Uh, so that's our first game done. Uh, on to our second title uh, for September, and that is a game called, I'm probably going to murder the pronunciation, Toem. Um, it's like a, basically when you look at its Wikipedia page, it says it's a photography game. Oh, didn't realise it was uh, by a Swedish game studio. Uh, this came out in September 2021. And when I saw this game, I was like, what the hell is this? Why is this our PS5 game for the month? And I must say, I was wrong. This is such a wonderful little title that is just really fun to play. Uh, the choice of going for a black and white grayscale color palette uh, was the right idea. It adds a kind of a bit of beauty to it. The level and character design is rather simple, but very adorable to look at. Uh, the game is perfect for people who are trophy hunters, as it won't take too long to attain the Platinum, which I've already done. Uh, but the actual game isn't... Well, the actual game, sorry, is quite a pleasant experience, though it's not like a AAA blockbuster. It's easy to play a game that requires you to explore and just take photos and just help people's problems that are around, really, and just solve the problems, really. Um, this is a game that is worth your time because it's short if this was longer i'd probably get bored but you don't um it's just a generally just like an, a very nice experience and which is you know what it's it's it brings a little bit of calmness really and it's just a a real nice pleasure to play and um, when you look at its metacritic it sits at an 80, so it has scored very, very well uh, with people, and I kind of personally agree with that. Its user score, though, sits at a 6.8. It's a bit lower. Um, yeah, you can see probably some people going, who oh, what's this? But you know what? I think it's a good between a 7, 8 out of 10 game. You know, it's... I like it. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, when I finished it, I was glad. I finished it because it was just very calming and pleasant really so if I was to give a thumb score for this game uh, a game score I'm gonna give it a three quarter thumb up because I think it's a very decent game really I very enjoyed it and uh, I feel like I think you would you not like you're missing out if you don't play it but you know it's a nice little short experience and an offering score it's only a year old, so I'm going to give it another three quarter of a thumb up because I feel like, you know, we've got a very fun little kind of like indie game, really, that's only a year old. Uh, so I think that's pretty damn good, really. You know, I've never heard it before, never seen it before, and, you know, I'm glad I've played it because it was a very enjoyable experience for me. Now on to our last title for September, and that is Need for Speed Heat. Uh, this came out in November 2019, 
And uh, I have to say I've been wanting to play this for a while, but I have been holding off purchasing it in the hope that one day it may come to PS Plus and the gods have spoken. The main thing that really attracted to me to this was the to play it was the box art that really drew me in. I saw the box art, I was like, oh yeah, I like that. That's that's very cool. Uh, but I have to say, we do have a history of getting Need for Speed games on PS Plus. Uh, from my account, I think this is the third one. It may be the fourth. Uh, I can't really see my PS3 history. Uh, I'd have to look back, but I think it could be the fourth. But it's our third in the uh, PS4 uh, games. Um, so, yeah, the last one was Payback, and we got that two years ago. I didn't play that for more than an hour or so. But he is already doing better, as I'm a couple of hours in, I'm still enjoying the game. Uh, I do think the problem with this franchise is that the games are just the same, with some tweaks, with some middle-of-the-road story happening throughout. The game is in a different location. I'm surprised they haven't tried to take some sort of inspiration from the Forza Horizon series and try to span what they are delivering to us, but, you know... What do I know? Uh, now with Heat, there are basically two sides to this game. There's the date and the night cycles, uh, where you're still, you know, it's still the same game, but to really rank up your player, uh, you need to be racing at night, but there comes consequences for that, and that is the police are looking for you, whereas as the day, they couldn't care less what you do, unless you unfortunately happen to crash into one, which I have. Uh, now the police are chasing you, and when they are chasing you, they are just annoying and take forever to get rid of. I don't really enjoy that aspect. It would have been better if they added it as like a burnout type game where you've got to just smash them away. Really, they have so much life and it's just so annoying. You really, I'd rather you have like 10 cop cars chasing me and I can easily kind of get rid of them in a way. It would have been a lot more fun. Um, but other than that, uh, the game's environment and backgrounds look amazing and is really it's a joy to drive around. Uh, where I think this game lacks in the visual department is the is the vehicles themselves. They don't look anything special considering we were at the end of the PS4 life cycle in a way with the PS5 release around the corner. Hadn't really got to that of making the cars look amazing. Um, but like the other editions, this controls very well. Like the other Need for Speed games, they controls very well. But I did find it super annoying with the first car I got being like a bitch to control around corners uh, at the start. But we've had an upgrade here and there. It became a more enjoyable experience to drive that car because the, the back just kept on swinging out. It was so annoying. But uh, I managed to sort that out and I'm still racing with that car not the greatest car but I'm just trying to rank up my character so I can unlock better cars and just buy that uh, now I'm very happy to finally have got to play this for free because like I haven't had to spend any money but I feel like I would have felt slightly robbed if I had not because it's rubbish or anything but because I bought 2015's edition six years ago and that plays very very well and nothing has changed that would have warranted me to buy this um you know if you haven't played an Eva speed game uh this is still a good entry and if you haven't played one for a while this is still a lot of fun but if you have played the series throughout and you haven't played this one there is really nothing new um Oh god, I also have to say the music in this game is just boring and gets very stale very quickly so I advise to have something playing in the background if you want some tunes to listen to or you'll be constantly changing the track. Because um, I really do have to say the only Need for Speed game I want to buy to add to my collection is the Hot Pursuit Remaster because I think that's that's the peak of this series really of the last 15 years, I really do think, I really think they should, uh, EA should really look into reviving the Burnout series, I would even be happy with maybe a remaster of Burnout 1 to 3, as uh, in my eyes they were the games that got better, uh, and better up to 3, and 
after that, after three, that's your personal opinion. If you think those ones are really good, you know, some of the right paradise is good. Uh, but you know, one to three ones are, I personally think are, are they, I've, I've played them when they first came out on the PS2, uh, days. So that I feel like they're, they're the, the top they are, but overall, it's a really fun game. Uh, you can play it for a bit and enjoy it. It's easy to play. If you're a new to the series, returning players of the series may find they're plus still playing the same game, but it's still very, very solid. Uh, and when you look at its Metacritic, it sits at a 72. So I think that's that's about right, really. Uh, a user score a bit lower, 6.1. I can probably see why people are probably saying it's the same game. It's the same game. Haven't really changed much. Yeah really haven't in a way uh but what were you expecting yeah they're like oh well you know as long as we get churn out something half decent that's the main thing so which is a real shame so i can understand it being uh, like a in the sixes but you know it's that it's that it's about that seven mark for me uh so if i was to give my thumb scores i think a game score i think it i think it's still solid uh, i would I would go with a three quarter of a thumb up because I feel like it's a it's a very fun game. It looks nice in the most part. It plays well, and uh, it's it's quite a bit of enjoyment. You can easily play it for a while and not get bored, uh, really. But where my where I'm gonna gonna go a bit of a downer. Not really much of a downer, but my offering score. I feel like you know we only got a Need for Speed game two years ago and t did we need another so far you know we've had three in the ps4 life cycle in a way i think we've had more i think i think we've actually had an at least another one at least i think i'm pretty sure we got hot pursuit years ago on the ps3 uh so yeah another need speed game even though it's in the newest one it is about shy of three years old but yeah, I'm going to go with a thumb in the middle as my offering score because I feel like that's fair. And uh, I'm just trying to look at it as a whole. People are like, yeah, but I'm new to PS Plus and this is good. I was like, yeah, but I'm looking as a more broader thing as I'm a long time subscriber to PS Plus. So I'm going to think it like that. And if you're new to PS Plus, then, then yeah, this is this is this is a much better offering for you personally but i think as an overall we've had few in the past so a thumb in the middle i think is good and because we got one only two years ago i feel like that's fair now we've gone through all the games uh we've played them all we've had a bit of this we had a bit of that shed some tears made some laughs or whatever uh but let's look at overall for the month and if we start go back and we look at uh our first game, which was Grand Blue uh, Fantasy Versus, game score three quarter of a thumb up, offering score three quarter of a thumb up, very decent game, uh, very beautiful game, definitely worth your time if you're into fighters. Uh, a second title was was a uh, Toem, a very interesting, quite adorable photo photo photography game. Uh, I liked it. it. May not be everyone's cup of tea, but I enjoyed it. Game score three quarter of a thumb up. Offering score three quarter thumb up. Now, finally, Need for Speed Heat. Um, nice game, nice game. I gave it a three quarter thumb up for a game score and an offering score of a half a thumb. You know, we've had more. This is another Need for Speed game. Uh, but overall, I think for the month, uh, I would probably go with a game score of a three quarter thumb up. And I'll probably go with an offering score of three quarter of a thumb up, because uh, I feel like it's it's a it's a decent month, really. You know, it's not like out of this world amazing, but I think it's super solid. They've got some very good games, which a lot of people will enjoy and have a lot of fun with. And uh, yeah, that's it. I think we've 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 covered September's PS Plus games really so anyway let's end the video here um still working on some uh platinum playthrough type uh videos hopefully i'll get them up at some point when i kind of get time to finish it all
But anyway, please like and subscribe to their channel. Let me know in the comments which games you like. Until next time, guys, take care. Goodbye.